All right, guys, so we're going to make some jerky. Um, what we're going to be using is uh, we have our Cabela's 10 tray dehydrator, our Cabela's 15 inch jerky gun. We're going to be using venison and the High Mountain variety pack. And what this is, it's the original blend, mesquite blend, hickory blend, cracked pepper and garlic, and Cajun blend. This variety pack will do five different types of jerky. Um, and it calls for four pounds of meat per type. We have two of these, so we have enough to do 40 pounds of meat, which should yield 20 pounds of jerky. What we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be doing eight pounds of venison with the original blend, which should yield four pounds of jerky. This is gonna be a two-step process. Today, we will be grinding our venison um, we're going to be adding the seasoning and the cure today. Uh, we're going to let it sit overnight between 12 to 24 hours. And then we will be using the jerky gun to put our jerky out on the trays and letting it dehydrate. We're ready to get started uh, with the jerky. The first part is we are going to be doing um, a coarse grind through our Cabela's one horsepower grinder um, and then we'll be doing a second grind by using the fine plate and we've got everything all set up we've got our jerky seasoning and our jerky cure and the only thing that we need now is eight pounds of meat so let's measure it out All right, we've got our scale ready to go. Here's our bowl that we're going to be using. I'm going to be setting the tear weight. So it's zeroed out. And as you can see, we have it's reading 7.92 pounds of meat so we're right at the eight pound line and we're ready to get grinding So now I'm switching from the coarse grinding plate to the fine grind.
we're finishing up with our second grind. Um, I'm going to show you guys a trick if you don't know. Um, so there's still meat captured in the auger portion here. And one of the neat tricks is you can actually use bread. It doesn't have to be any specific kind of bread. In this case, I'm going to use hot dog buns that are a little aged. <laughs> and that'll help push all of that meat out. So once you start pushing these down and you see the end of the meat finish and you just start to see that bread, that's when you shut it off. And you'll know that you got every bit of meat out of your grinder. So you can see how that bread is starting to push all of that meat out. And here shortly we should start seeing the beginning of the bread coming through. And there you go. You can see the, the difference where the bread is actually starting to show up. So we managed to get every, every bit of meat out from our grinder. So we're at the point now to where we're going to mix in our spices and our cure into our freshly ground meat. Um, so we have two cups of ice water. So for eight pounds of meat, it calls for two cups of ice water. And then we're going to add our spices and our cure into the water. We're going to add half of that mixture into the meat. I'm going to mix it up really well. And then I'll add the other half and... Um, basically what we want is for the meat and all the mixture to be tacky. So let's see what happens. All right, we got our mixture all set up in the ice water. That's about half of the water. Next up pretty good. Let's do the other half. Well, you can see it's really starting to stick to my hands now. It's mixing up real good. I'd say that's pretty tacky. <laughs> I almost can't get it off my hands. It's so tacky it's pulling the bowl off the countertop too. 
All right, so I say mission accomplished. I'm gonna pull all this off. And the only thing that's left to do now is to put saran wrap on top of our freshly mixed meat. All right guys, so it's in the fridge, um, ready to cure for about 12 to 24 hours. And after that, we're ready to make jerky. It's the next day. Um, the meat needed to cure between 12 and 24 hours. Um, it's been 17 hours and we're ready to check on the meat. Here's the meat all set up, all cured, and you can see how the cure has changed the color of the meat there. And again, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using our 15 inch Cabela's jerky gun. We're going to be laying out the meat on the trays in strips, and as you can see, we're going to be using the double strips. Basically what you really want to do is when you get your meat out you want to um, do it in rolls about the same size as the jerky blaster tube and that'll help you get your meat in nice and tight. Use the stuffer to get it all down in there. And we're just going to fill the tube up and get ready to put it on the trays. Take the funnel off. You want to leave just enough of this seal so that when you put it in, it'll all match up and it makes it a little bit easier to screw it back on. And you just want to apply steady, even pressure. Because the main thing is, is you want to make sure that it, your jerky is all the same thickness. So it dehydrates at the same time. You want to give yourself a little bit of space at the end. And start the new row. And if you keep this tight, 
you should be able to get four full passes and maximize the amount of space that you have on your trays. There you go, that easy. We did nine full trays and one swipe with the jerky blaster. And this is eight pounds of venison and it seemed to fit perfect. So we're gonna transport these trays from here and get them over in the dehydrator. We got the last tray going in. You can see we got all 10 trays ready to be dehydrated. So I'm going to move the temperature gauge to 160, close the door, and start it. And just like that, we're making jerky. We have everything in the dehydrator. I uh, just wanted to go over really quick. Um, the cleanup was really easy. Um, basically, we just had these um, one, two, three, four, five items. Um, basically we just rinsed them off uh, and then scrubbed them up with with uh, warm water and soap and the cleanup was really easy um, this is what we had left over and from everything that i've read um, and been told um, if you want to see what your final product is gonna be like um, whatever you have left over you form in a patty uh, cook it on the stove top and that should be really really close to what the the final product is so i'm gonna try that right now all right here we go that's really good oh that's really good definitely worth it definitely worth it so uh as soon as the jerky is uh, done, we'll let you guys know how long that it took and we'll do the final taste test. It's been right at six hours. Um, we didn't actually start testing the jerky uh, until we hit about the four hour mark and when we started that it seemed to be a little squishy in the middle so we let it go another hour and when we hit the five hour mark we tested it then and it was a little bit squishy um, in the center um, so we let it go one more hour and as you can see it's not squishy, but the consistency is exactly what you would think jerky should be. And I'm getting ready to do the taste test and to let you guys know how it actually turned out. So, the consistency is perfect. It has a ton of flavor. Wow. Wow. Definitely worth it, guys. Um, so as you can see, we got four quart-size Ziploc bags ready to go. We're just kind of letting them cool off now. And if you like this video, make sure that you like it. Um, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can be up to date on all of our upcoming videos but thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time